In this last video, I'm going to show you a start to end process in how I would build the chair, which has a pipe base and then a nicely sculpted shell. I'm going to start with my pipes and I'm going to create a sketch on, as you can see, the ground plane there. Everything is set to inches. I zoom in a little bit and I would like to have a 20 inch long ground line. So there's 20 inches. Escape, left mouse button, click, construction. This line basically serves as my left and right endpoints. Here my, my pipes would end. Let's zoom in a little bit because by measuring I would like the other next line be 14 inches long. So maybe here, let's see if I can drag this one out, 13, 14. I could also type in 14, of course, click, escape, zoom out a little bit. Now this line which I selected, that is actually the line that, for example, defines the, the upper pipe, the horizontal bar. Now for a functional chair, this line has obviously to be more to the front. So this angle will be more deeper. This one will be flatter because most of your weight, your hip will be a little bit at the center or front. And then when you move your back backwards, you apply pressure to the back leg, which is why it should be a little bit moved to the back. So that's the reason why we move the, our sitting base a little bit to the front. And maybe I do a little bit more dramatic so you see the difference now. And then with the line tool, I can simply connect those lines. And this looks like a top view. So maybe I'm selecting this line and then moving it just maybe a half an inch back. Okay, so that's good. Now this is all seen from the side and I actually would like this one to have any height. So you see it's a flat sketch. What I can do, select the sketch, go to move, move it up and for example type in 18 inches. That for example should be the center height. Okay, so you see now this way we easily generated a three-dimensional sketch of our object. Also, just to reinforce this one, go to your name, click on preferences, go to design and then activate the allow 3D sketching. That's really important. Okay. Now, to use this one as a center path for making a pipe, those sharp corners don't really work well. So let me show you a double step what we're going to do. We first are going to use the fillet and for example, round those corners. Let's go and look from the side. And maybe for an untrained eye, this looks okay. Um, as an industrial designer, I really do not like fillets I we would consider those G1 or and what that basically means is the line comes stops and then immediately in arcs connects to there so it's very mathematically correct or clean visually it's just not very pleasing because I have an abrupt change from a line to an arc but I can use those fillets including their radius really well for example to specify this uh, those roundings and then I select them and delete them. So you know I cut actually everything nicely away. So what I'm going to do now is actually I'm rebuilding those transitions with a spline and in industrial design we call this one kind of like a blend curve. So I'm blending between this line and this line with another curve. So you can click on spline here and then I click Hold my left mouse button, drag my mouse up, and you see there are red lines coming out. Left mouse button, click, and hold 
and then I move my mouse to the left and there are those red lines. Perfect. Let's do the same here. Click, drag, release. Click, drag, release. Okay, let's take a look. And you will see the difference is not really much, but you see that these lines do not look like a perfect arc. They're more really blending and they the line comes and then this blend curve remains a little bit linear and then it blends and then it gets more linear and blends into this line. Okay, let's say <clears throat> something doesn't work with the dragging. You also see that there are interesting icons. Those are the constraint tangent icons. And that means that this line is constrained or forced to always be flowing tangent into this line and this line. And let me show you how we can do this manually. So you see I'm just creating a simple spline. Then I click on constraint, click on tangent, and then I click first the spline, be tangent to the line. First the spline, be tangent to the line. That's really important. You have this click order. Okay. So why all this fuss? Let's take a look at this. If I click this point, move, move this one up, you see this blend curve adjusts perfectly. So it's a really nice workflow. Okay. Now what basically is left is, well, we do not have any rings yet. So let's take a small shortcut. I'm going to create a center diameter ring from there. With an inch, click. And let's do the same here. Click. So you see inside the same two-dimensional sketch, I have my my rings on the sketch plane and my 3D wire or for the path inside 3D space. Then when I'm good, I can click on stop, switch to patch and use loft. So then what's really important is that you do not click on a point. Make sure you really click on this ring click onto this other ring and Fusion tells us there's a problem. And this is that's fine right now because we tell it to make a surface between this ring to this ring, but the rings are flat on the ground. Think about a pipe. The openings of each side of a pipe are looking at each other. Here they don't. But we want this ring to be blended to this ring along this line. So I click this line and I get another warning and it's still okay. We have one profile, second profile and third profile. And this should not be a profile, this should be a path. So inside loft, no, after you click this one, so one, two and three, we say convert to center line and take a look at what happens. So basically what the software is doing is we say um, blend this, cur uh, this circle to this circle along this line. I can click closed, click OK. And with this close basically means, or I thought actually it did, obviously looks like it did not. I thought like it would create actually cap it, but maybe it does not. Okay, that's fine for the moment. Okay, so that's for example one easy way how we can make a blended pipe. If I turn on my sketch visibility and I click on a point and then inside modeling, so I do not go into the sketch and edit it, See, I, even there I can move a point, okay, and then the surface gets updated. So this is actually really nice. Okay, now our seating base is pretty much, let's say, 18 inches wide. So that means um, this is being at the center, not ideal. 
So I also only want to build this one once and mirror it over. So if I would mirror this one over along the mid center, we would get something like this. So I go to mirror, object or body, this surface, not the sketch, the mirror plane, this one. Okay. So there we see, um, yeah, doesn't make sense. We have to move the sketch to the left. That's very easy. We go into edit. Unfortunately, we built everything as a ground sketch. So I can go into top view and move everything simply uh, eight inches to the right, uh, sorry, to the left. So I go to move with everything selected and eight inches. Okay. Click stop. And then you see now it redraws the surface and then the mirror flips this one over. So that's actually really nice. Um, there's maybe one problem left. So let's go and edit. Let's zoom in. Oh, unfortunately, I only have the scale on the right side, not on the left side. Well, I can draw a line. And there we see this is roughly seven inches. Well, this is actually eight. And then there's one line we move to the right by an inch. So if the top width is 18, so um, let's say make a line. So 18 divided by nine, click. Um, no. <laughs> That was a total math failure. I mean, 18 is divided by two. Okay, click there. So this is nine. So at, to this point, this one has to move. So you can select everything, obviously not this point, move. And for example, now it's two more inches. So I need to move it to that distance. Okay. This one actually I can maybe keep and simply say this should be uh, a construction, maybe go to dimensioning and this line I can dimension. I cannot, I think, dimension those parts because they are three dimensional, but I can still dimension everything that's on the sketch plane. There. You know what? can do something interesting. Let's make this 1.5. So we scale it down. Take a look at the result. You see it blends from one inch to a half inch circle along the center line. Go and say show dimensions. And you see now I see all the dimensions inside my sketch. So even inside this 3D space, I can change it. So I don't have to go into the sketch so see, it's really nice. Okay, so that's, for example, as you can see, I only built one side of a sketch, then make a surface, and then on the ground plane, move everything to the left. You can still work a little bit with dimensioning. Um, and then use the surface command loft to create my open pipe, and simply then mirror it over. Now, Currently, if we want to be really precise, um, this one is also open. So maybe this should be solid. I could go in front of my mirror and then actually go to patch and click this ring, close, patch, click this ring and close. And you might ask yourself why I did this. So with the patch, I created caps. So you see they, they fill it. And also here inside bodies, you see I have three objects. You can select the, those three and then say modify. Uh, sorry, I'll go to modify and say stitch. And like in fabric design, it stitches those three surfaces together into one 
full body. And let's go back to there. Let's see what we have. And you see though, I have two solid pipes. Now, um, everything we do, again, you know, we build it loosely, not 100% precise, because this is all more a concept model. And then, I mean, here the pipe we, we built visually for us in a rep representational way. But then for manufacturing, they of course have stock pipe and then they just need to know maybe the inner shape, how to bend it, how many degrees. So I can let go a little bit of precision in furniture design uh, because a lot of these things then will be manually actually fabricated. So because that's all in the need, like the length, the height, the radius or the shape to make the molds or to understand how to bend the pipe. So that's the reason why I selected this process. Okay, so this was basically everything for um, those sites. Now let's take a look at what we can maybe do to create the construction this the shell actually will sit on. Currently these legs are not connected. So I'm creating myself another sketch at the center plane. So you see I'm really making best use of my grid and my planes. And the main reason for that is simply I can zoom in and can make use maybe of my grid a little bit. Go to circle diameter and let's say for the sake of simplicity also here we're going to use continue working with one inch pipe diameter and I'm placing these lines or oh, those the circles front and the end and you see like where they are right now okay I'm going to hide my bodies for the moment and uh, then I'm going to click Uh, spline and spline okay and spline and spline okay now this part right now might look a little bit confusing and you see these lines are very uh, flat so take a look at this one I cannot at the moment snap to those parts of my sketch my other sketch and the main reason is they don't maybe want you also to uh, snap by accident to other sketches but what I can do is I can go to say include geometry this line inside my sketch so now when I create this line look at this see I can snap to it so I can click and click to the center okay click and click at the center and okay so now if I rotate my view you see these lines are actually th connecting the ring and for example my uh, those lines now the nice thing about because this is uh, snappable I can take a point and for example move it so that wasn't too difficult so let's exit the, this command and for example now here I say maybe uh, model and sweep and there we say this ring along this line join uh, actually I would rather like to have new body and that's good let's do this one more time this ring this profile and new body okay so these two lines for example I could now also mirror over so mirror um, select those two objects oh wait actually I just want to have the objects the bodies there and there you see everything is selected and then my plane this one here okay and there it is let's take a look okay so what we what can we do now well maybe these rings actually are not really ideally positioned maybe they should move down a little bit so I see I clicked at the midpoints of each ring clicked okay so by 
moving the midpoint, I, um, how could I say that? Uh, yeah, move the ring down. And now I have to fine tune them a little bit. So I go edit, click on this line here, go to here. This this process now what I'm going going to do might look a little bit complicated. So please bear with me. I select this line, click on activate tangent handle, and you see you have these these handles here. And what I try to do is simply make him look horizontally. And also here, click this one, right click, activate, click this one, go to a side view, right click, move, move this one up a little bit, and there. Let's see how this one looks. So you know, looks already much better. Nicely arced. Let's go to your top view. Well, something doesn't work here. Uh, that makes sense because this point is there. So let's go edit the sketch. Take a look where this handle is. And there you see this handle actually is at the line. And I want also from the top view that this blue line is perpendicular to our mirror axis. So click this point, move, and then see if I can, for example, move it in a way so that it is nicely perpendicular, which is now with the snapping difficult. So I have to turn this one off and I have to eyeball this a little bit. And best is try to zoom in going to use an old school technique. I'm putting a dialogue to there so I can use it as a hard edge like a ruler there. Okay, stop. And let's take a look. Now, you know, and for what we're trying to do, that is good enough. Obviously, this is not perfect. But again, all we do are here is building maybe an ideation model. Um, which then we could give to to engineering and then they will go over it, rebuild it, do it better or not. I don't want to say do it better, but basically build their computer model they need for manufacturing. But for us um, as designers, this is totally okay what we're doing right now because what we're doing is exploring ideas. So we don't want to be hold down or slowed down by technicality. We should just build the model in a way understanding that the engineer doesn't have to destroy it and start from scratch, that the engineer simply needs to adjust something a little bit uh, or has it easy to understand what we try to do and that will be fine. Okay, so that was everything for the metal part, I think. Let's see what we have here. Yeah, so this is one object, one object, one object, one object, yeah, okay. so. That's it.